Thank you for the uh, introduction and like to thank the organizers for their uh, efforts putting together this workshop. And uh, uh, it's a great pleasure uh, to speak uh, as always at IPAM. <laughs> Uh, so today, I'd uh, like to uh, 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 discuss a uh, Lagrangian approach uh, to uh, uh, numerical homogenization in some sense. So uh, this is joint work with uh, uh, Professor Zhi Wenzhang at uh, Hong Kong University and together with his uh, two grad students. Uh, one uh, is Zhong Jian Wang. Uh, he's graduating soon and going to University of Chicago as a postdoc. And, um, and Jun Long Liu, who's still there, uh, partially supported by NSF. Okay, so here's the outline. Uh, first, I talk about the, uh, uh, the flows. Uh, so there are two kinds of flows, the ordered and the, uh, the disordered or chaotic. Um, and, and all the flows in this talk are uh, incompressible, like water. So they're uh, another way to uh, Say it is uh, when you deform the uh, the flow particles, the volume is uh, preserved or volume preserving flows. And uh, then I'll uh, discuss uh, uh, diffusivity, effective diffusivity, uh, homogenization, and um, and uh, the connection to uh, mixing uh, in the flows and some remarkable behavior uh, uh, called residual diffusivity. Um, and then we'll turn to uh, uh, numerical methods to calculate the, uh, uh, the effective diffusivity. Uh, uh, I'll introduce uh, the so-called uh, uh, structure preserving methods and, uh, and, and discrete uh, corrective problems. Uh, we have seen in um, many talks so far uh, on the uh, corrective problems and that's the uh, key to, uh, to averaging, to homogenization. And, uh, and here's another version uh, on the discrete side uh, that help us draw a connection between the Lagrangian approach and the uh, standard or Eulerian approach. Okay, and then we'll uh, try to uh, see how it works in practice. When you have 3D chaotic and stochastic flows, uh, this is method work. And so I'll show you some uh, computational results um, and uh, after that, uh, we'll come to uh, a closely connected problem uh, on front speed, uh, flame speed, uh, and Hamilton Jacobi equation. Uh, in the setting, uh, the flame speed is just like uh, effective diffusivity, except uh, the underlying problem is more nonlinear. Uh, so again, we're, we're going to turn to the uh, Lagrangian approach. Uh, we don't solve PDEs here. Uh, 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 in some sense, we saw PDs in, indirectly uh, through the Feynman class representation and a uh, genetic particle al algorithm. Uh, so uh, particle methods have been uh, discussed in several talks in this workshop. Uh, Jim's talk, uh, Jeremy's and, uh, uh, and, and many others uh, and free those. And, um, so uh, after this, uh, I'll, I'll show you the, uh, uh, the result on the uh, uh, three-dimensional Kolmogorov -well flow, which is a chaotic flow in three dimensions, and see how this method works uh, for that case. Okay, and then we'll conclude and point out a few uh, future directions. Okay, so let's start with the flow uh, in two dimensions. Uh, this is a so-called uh, cellular flow. Uh, or uh, Beltrami's children's flow. It's a Hamiltonian flow. The Hamiltonian is here. And uh, uh, you can visualize the flow on the plane. So the, uh, uh, on the cell, uh, two pi by two pi, uh, there were four uh, spinning vortices, uh, counter-rotating, and they're steady. Uh, so that's it. Uh, if you're uh, sitting here, uh, then you're gonna rotate around and never leave the cell. And if you're here, you're gonna stay here and rotate around, kind of like the quarantine mode we're in. Uh, so you, <laughs> you don't leave your residence, you can stay where you are, it's spinning. Uh, you can go around your uh, apartment, uh, house, but you cannot leave. Okay, um, so that's it. Uh, the steady two-dimensional uh, flow, Hamiltonian flow. 
And now let's look at uh, a related flow, uh, which has the, uh, the following form. Uh, the first term here is the steady part, uh, so cosine y and cosine x. And then there's a um, uh, phase shift pi over two, so you turn cosine to a sine, and then you multiply that by cosine t, uh, also in the second components. So now the problem, uh, the flow field becomes time periodic, and there's a parameter state in front. Uh, of course, if state equal to zero, we're back to steady uh, flow, and more or less, the if, if you do the phase portrait, it's going to be exactly like this, except you rotate it by uh, pi over four. So up to a uh, rotation, the steady part is just this. Uh, okay, so I'm going to show you what happens when theta is increased, especially if you increase from zero to one. What happens at one? And here it is. So uh, there are cells on the plane, and uh, there are two in invariant uh, manifolds, lines, so uh, the particle will never go across this way. So we can just look at the channel direction. And there are uh, 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 three cells. We put um, a few hundred particles in there, uh, color them, uh, RGB. And this is at t equal to zero. So if theta were equal to zero, in the steady case, all these particles in the same color would just spin around in their cell. Uh, stay at home, they never leave, and go around like this. And the green will stay where they are, in their home, and, mm -hmm. and so on. And now, if theta is equal to one, this is what happens. At t equal to um, uh, 1.0, uh, you start to see certain uh, spill off, uh, certain green cells start to go outside their room and visit their friends in the neighboring room. Uh, okay, the same thing with the blue, they are uh, free to go visit their neighbors. Okay, some of them. Uh, and some other uh, uh, blue, for example, still say where they are, spinning in some sense. And if you wait another uh, day, and this is what happens. There are more uh, uh, greens that go visit the, uh, the red, the red visit the green, and the blue visit the red, uh, uh, green, and the green visit the blue. So start to have some mixing. And if you wait another day, wow, look at this picture. They're fully mixed. Uh, people are having a par party, mingling. <laughs> so uh, no matter where you are, you're going to see three colors. So this is the, the remarkable uh, phenomenon of mixing. As soon as you leave two dimension, uh, when you go to time dependent uh, two dimensional flow, you start to see mixing. So that's a new phenomenon. And, you, uh, and this is a, uh, uh, another way to put it, it's a, it's a cha chaotic flow. Okay. All right, uh, so that's the uh, uh, first example of a chaotic flow. And let's look at uh, uh, the three-dimensional case. So this is a well-known uh, arnold Bertrami children's flow, uh, ABC flow for short. So um, the right-hand side are trig functions, it, it very explicit. Uh, what we notice is that the first component is a function of y and z, so it's uh, not a function of x. Second component is a function of uh, uh, x and z, and so there's no y. And same thing, the third component has no z in it. So if you take the divergence, it's automatically zero. Uh, so that means it's uh, incompressible or volume preserving. And uh, uh, this uh, special flow field is a uh, steady state solution of the 3D Euler equation. Uh, and it's not always stable. Uh, Professor Freelander, for example, in the 90s with co-authors uh, co studied uh, the instability of such a flow. Um, but today we're gonna just take it as a flow and, 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 uh, and, and look at how the, uh, the particles move in it. Uh, to draw a connection with the previous uh, Hamiltonian flow, you can write the first two components into this form, introduce the uh, H function, which is uh, B cosine X plus C sine Y. And then the, uh, first, the first two equations could be uh, written into this way. Uh, it's not Hamiltonian. Uh, there's a, a forcing term, if you like, over here. Uh, but if A, equal to Z, if A were equal to zero, uh, then uh, the forcing is zero, then you come back to the uh, two-dimensional case we talked about before, and in that case, it's Hamiltonian. So uh, 
the two-dimensional case uh, is what we call the uh, interval case, uh, where things move in order. Uh, as soon as A start to leave a zero, then you start to get a uh, certain chaotic behavior. Okay, so if A were equal to zero, you, you look down on the XY plane, and this is what you see. Wow, uh, almost the same, exactly the same as the cell of flow we've seen before. Uh, and in particular, if you're staring at a point uh, x equal to zero, pi equal to pi over two, which is here, uh, there is an exact solution. Uh, there is a light beam that shoots out of that point upward, uh, what we call a ballistic solution. Uh, and it's given here, very simple formula. So there is a, uh, some trajectory that uh, comes out of the plane and goes upward like this. Okay, so now our question, our first question, is what if well, uh, A is small? Can you say something? It turns out that the, that the ballistic uh, orbit, the exact solution, can be perturbed into a spiral uh, trajectory. So you're not shooting straight. Uh, instead, the trajectory can spiral, but it's still going upward. So here's our main result that um, if A were uh, small enough, uh, then there is a perturbed trajectory, which we call the uh, a smooth uh, trajectory. And it has a, a symptotic speed. If divide by zt by t, then there's a limit that's t goes to infinity. And the speed will uh, uh, converge to the exact speed uh, at a equal to zero if a is small. Uh, so this is actually done very in a very elementary way by contraction mapping. And you can do more sophisticated stuff like um, a KM theory. Uh, to construct uh, quasi periodic orbits, or uh, if you want the uh, other uh, order, uh, high order harmonics, uh, you can also do Melnikov. So there are other trajectories, but this one is the simplest to, to construct. Okay, so here's an illustration. If A is small, as our theorem uh, as was saying, you, you get some spiral trajectory that's going upwards. Uh, if A is not small, uh, then something else uh, can happen. For example, this will be a, a wild trajectory uh, going up, uh, so it's not really uh, a regular motion. Uh, so you could get something that's still going up, but in a more ir irregular fashion. Okay, uh, so that's uh, movement in the Z direction. There's also um, movement in the xy direction. So if you look down the uh, xy plane, uh, uh, they were like before uh, we colorized the uh, three cells. And you can see that certain particles near the edge, uh, near the corner in particular, start to leak and go this way, upward. Same thing with the other cells. And it could also leak in uh, the uh, y direction, the x direction, y direction. Uh, so we call these uh, trajectories the uh, uh, the edge orbits because uh, they uh, leave the edges and go somewhere else. So mathematically, uh, we could prove a theorem uh, saying that uh, if A is small, then or B or C is small, either either one of these parameters, then you can find a uh, trajectory that is essentially periodic uh, if you can uh, uh, you know uh, wrap it uh, back onto the torus. Uh, so in other words, there is a constant t of some period where the trajectory will come back to uh, 2 pi, 2 pi 0, for example. So on the, uh, if you view 2 pi as a, a 0 mod 2 pi, if you mod 2 pi, then this is exactly where you, uh, you know, it's like 0. So then you get a periodic orbit uh, on the torus. So this is if you go from a corner to a corner. You can also go in one direction, uh, just gain 2 pi in the first component or the second component. Okay, uh, the second trajectory, uh, the unidirectional uh, trajectory, uh, can also be proved in the non perturbative case when A, B, and C are all equal to one. So this is uh, done by a non perturbative uh, symmetry argument uh, uh, three, uh, three or four years ago with my colleague Yifeng and uh, Andrei Schlatos. Uh, so I think this is the, uh, the only uh, global result uh, for ABC flow since the 1960s, uh, there's no other uh, mat mathematical analysis uh, of this nature, global, and for a chaotic system. 
Okay, and such trajectories, what we call the edge or, or orbits, uh, they do not e exist in the integrable case. If a were equal to zero, there is no such thing. So this is really the uh, non-integrable behavior we're talking about, global and non-integrable. Okay, so that's our second example where we have done some mathematical analysis, gained some insight. Uh, the next flow uh, in this talk is the uh, Kolmogorov world flow. Uh, so if you drop the cosine, uh, take the, uh, the ABC flow with A equal to B equal to C equal to one, drop the cosine, keep the sign, and there you get the Kolmogorov world flow. Okay, so what's the difference? Uh, in the A, ABC flow, we have seen that uh, we could construct the um, ballistic orbits, so that's the order part of the phase space. And there are also the other the, the, uh, chaotic trajectories. Uh, there's a lot of study of chaotic trajectories uh, starting from uh, Arnold uh, in the 65. Uh, very little study on the order part. Uh, and then it turns out that the, the ballistic trajectory we talked about uh, have certain neighborhoods. Uh, the trajectories nearby, they move similar in a similar way. So what you see in the uh, direct simulation is that you, you get actually a tube structure. So it's not just a, a single trajectory, it's actually a tube-like trajectory. So there's some thickness around the, uh, the exact solution we constructed that move in a similar way. So, uh, so this is what uh, 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 people saw in the simulation. So this is a vortex tube in a DC flow that uh, uh, guide the particles uh, uh, through from one to the other. And uh, this kind of a, a tube or a channel like structure uh, will help enhance the transport, as, as we'll see. So that's the ABC story. When you go to Kolmogorov, in this case, uh, if you look at the Pongari section, as uh, people have done in the 90s, you see uh, a lot of chaos, a lot more than a ABC. Uh, it, it's more, it's messy. Uh, and it's clear that this order dominates order in the Kolmogorov flow. In the ABC flow, you can say that the, the order part is at least comparable to the, in fact, the, the, the disorder part is uh, uh, weak. Uh, but in the common world flow, the disorder part is very, very strong. Uh, uh, in current, uh, in uh, the ongoing work uh, with uh, uh, my colleagues, uh, we're trying to construct the uh, ballistic orbit in cave flow. Uh, okay, so, uh, so how do we measure the amount of chaos? Uh, you, you can view it, uh, you know, uh, draw pictures and, and, and stuff, but is there something quantitative you can say about chaos? Uh, there are certainly many such quantities uh, in chaotic dynamical systems, but today we're gonna look at one such a quantity, which is called effective diffusivity. Okay, so this is more in line with uh, homogenization and our workshop. <laughs> Okay, so what is effective diffusivity? So uh, we're gonna look at a stochastic dynamical system. So the Etho equation, we add noise to it. This is the, uh, the, the Brownian part or the Wiener process. Uh, then you ask, well, what is the uh, mean squared? So you, you look at the displacement, project in certain direction, in this case, just one, zero, zero, zero. You square it, take the expectation and, and Divide by 2t, t is time, and uh, take the limit t to infinity. If this quantity has a limit, then it, it is the effective diffusivity. So it's the mean squared displacement uh, that has been studied uh, for a very long time in physics. In fact, this, very, this formula uh, is, is, is called the Einstein formula, because uh, uh, he computed the uh, diffusivity, effective diffusivity for um, certain particle pro problems. Uh, the same formula has lots of application. Uh, for example, in uh, turbulent combustion, uh, sorry, in turbulent diffusion, uh, this problem was first studied uh, almost a century ago in 1923 by Taylor. Uh, uh, so he, uh, and then the more re recent review uh, uh, by Maida and Kramer in 1999, you could find lots of uh, models uh, where this formula uh, play a uh, important role. Okay, uh, sorry. Uh, however, in general, this formula is very hard to do uh, by hand. Uh, analytically, it's very difficult to carry out. 
and it's also hard to do analysis. Uh, the Orlari approach is uh, the following. So you're going to solve a so-called corrector problem. So I uh, put it here, here, uh, here. Uh, so the it's a vaccine diffusion time-dependent vaccine diffusion problem with the vector field v on the right-hand side, uh, and, and the solution chi is the so-called corrector. Uh, in the periodic case, uh, it's also called cell problem because the corrector is defined on the periodic cell. Uh, I put it here. Uh, you could uh, read a lot more about this uh, in the, pra the classical book of uh, ben Leon Public Law. And uh, here's the formula for DE. It's given by uh, B0, which is essentially the sigma square over two. It's called the molecular diffusivity as constant. And then uh, plus a correction, uh, which is chi one, the first component of chi times the first component of velocity, if we're interested in the uh, effective diffusivity in the one zero direction. Here's a, an equivalent formula. Okay, so uh, in the second approach, uh, you solve PDEs. Uh, you don't deal with all this uh, stochastic stuff. Uh, it looks pretty nice. Uh, in fact, uh, uh, more can be done, it seems, from analysis. Uh, let's go back to the flow. In the 2D static flow, uh, the DE scales like square root of D0. So as D0 goes to zero, you get enhancement. It's not D0, but you get the square root of D0, which is much bigger than D0. And this was done uh, by many people, uh, starting from uh, Steve Childress uh, with boundary layer analysis uh, to Fang Jiang Pam Nicola in the uh, 90s by the variational analysis and the Heinz uh, uh, correct analysis. Uh, on the Lagrangian side, and more, uh, in, uh, uh, there's this work by uh, Pavliotis Stewart and uh, Ziglakis uh, that uh, compute the solution simulating the uh, SDE and re recover this result. Okay, so uh, that's the steady flow. Uh, when you move to the uh, uh, time uh, periodic flow that uh, I showed you, uh, where mixing happens, then uh, there is no proof till this day, but numerical simulation strong, strongly suggests that this DE uh, no longer uh, follow this law. Instead, it uh, approaches a constant uh, stay above zero as D zero goes to zero at theta equal to one. So when the particles mix, the diff effective diffusivity is enhanced even more. Uh, it doesn't even go to zero uh, when the molecular diffusivity goes to zero. So this is what we call the residual diffusivity. And in uh, uh, physics, it's also called the eddy diffusivity. Uh, here's a physics paper. Uh, a couple of years ago, uh, uh, Yifeng um, uh, and our joint student, uh, Liu, uh, we recovered this, uh, we redid the calculation by spectral method. And indeed, here's the, the plot. Uh, as D0 goes to zero, the DE approach some constant, it doesn't go uh, down to zero. Okay. And uh, more, interesting, uh, more interestingly, this DE as a function of theta is not monotone function, it has some peaks. At certain theta, you, you can get a peak, and other theta, you can get a valley. Uh, but overall, as theta increases, uh, the, you get more enhancement over here at theta equals one. So this is what we call the resonance phenomenon. Uh, but what does the corrector look like? Well, at B0 equal to 10 to the minus three, I saw you four snapshots. So you see the layer structures start to form a small d0 uh, across different times. That's 10 to the minus three. If you go to 10 to the minus four, you see similar structures, only the layers get thinner and thinner. So in other words, you, have, you get uh, sharp gradients and so on. So in two dimension, uh, we can afford to do it uh, the, on, a, on, on a laptop uh, by spectral method directly. Uh, but if you go to three dimension, this is gonna be very expensive. Uh, you, you can still do it but on supercomputer, but uh, you may wonder, is there another way not solving PDEs to handle this kind of uh, structures? Uh, in fact, in, uh, in Professor uh, Wadi's talk, he, met, he mentioned uh, several strategies to construct adaptive bases. Uh, but today, I'm, not, I'm going to follow the, uh, the Lagrangian approach. And that is to say, let's start with the stochastic differential equation, which we have here. Um, and this uh, dynamics has invariant um, measure on the chorus, uh, the uniform measure. So we're going to discretize uh, the SDE. 
in the following form. So uh, here's the, uh, uh, suppose we go from step zero to step one. Uh, so x zero to x one. Uh, we're gonna update uh, component by component. So in the first component, it's just the Euler. Uh, but we, after the first component is updated, we use it to update the second component put in here. Uh, remember our flow uh, is uh, uh, the uh, first component of the velocity doesn't have uh, the, uh, the a a x1 in it. Second component doesn't have x2 in it. So that th this is why you see the jump from one to three. And then you re repeat this fashion, you update these uh, coordinates one by one. When you finish, you're over here. Last step, you add noise. Uh, so, uh, so this is a standard Gaussian uh, with the uh, square root of t uh, in front, the scaling. And it turns out that uh, this scheme uh, has its own invariant measure, which we call pi delta t, and it approximates the uh, true invariant measure, uh, pi u, the uniform invariant measure. Uh, if there's no noise, uh, this uh, scheme uh, has, uh, was studied uh, long ago uh, by uh, Feng Kang and his student in 1995. Uh, in that case, the, uh, the, the method will preserve the volume. So we will see that this uh, method of discretization uh, is much better than the Euler. Uh, for a simple reason that the, uh, the volume of the uh, physical flow is preserved. And here's our main result that uh, if we let Pn be the first component, suppose we want to get the effect of divisivity in x1 direction. And then the, if you uh, follow the scheme, uh, so we consider the case that V is periodic and separable in the sense that Vi does not depend on Xi, this is a T assumption. And then the above scheme, which is e e e e explicit, uh, as n goes to infinity, the second moment of the first component divided by two n delta T would approach the exact effective diffusivity up to the error delta t. So, uh, so this means uh, if you run long enough, uh, how, how long it, uh, we can observe it, uh, we can observe this quantity, uh, the second moment divided by t uh, as approach a constant, so you can then stop there. And then see, uh, and then uh, the theorem guarantees uh, that if your time step is delta t, the error you make is no more than the first order. Okay, uh, so so that's essentially. And how long uh, you uh, have to uh, wait till this time capital delta t depend on the mixing, how how fast the flow is being mixed. The faster it mix, the shorter the capital t is. Okay, and then uh, uh, to prove this, uh, uh, we're gonna uh, uh, view the PN uh, 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 and the uh, this discretized solution as a discrete Markov process. And then uh, we're gonna draw a connection uh, between this quantity, the discretized second moment uh, with the flat formula, D. Okay. So uh, let the uh, i delta t tau uh, be the uh, density evolution operator of the, uh, uh, the Markov pro process generated by the scheme uh, from tau to tau plus delta, delta t. And then if you iterate it n times, uh, we show that this uh, quantity is a mapping uh, that uh, brings the initial uh, any measure uh, to a uh, uh, invariant measure over here. Uh, and that's the first uh, statement. There is a discrete invariant measure uh, of the scheme. The second is, uh, if we take the expectation of the first component of uh, the scheme, uh, we get this equation. And then if we uh, go back to the beginning from, uh, so relate the xn to x0, then we get a sum over here. So this sum uh, mo motivates us uh, to define a function that looks like that, except we sum it to infinity and, uh, and we uh, place the, uh, and add a time shift from tau uh, over here. So uh, this function uh, is well defined. Uh, the, the series is summable uh, because we can control it uh, with the uh, discrete invariant measure. So this function is well defined. And then uh, when you calculate the second mo moments, that sum would appear. It turns out this sum is a 
space-time means your solution of the following equation. Okay, so it's the I delta T tau, and that's the mapping of the density of the uh, discretized solution, uh, minus chi, uh, chi, uh, chi minus chi equal to delta T V1 uh, tau plus delta T over two X. Okay, uh, so this is what we call the dis discrete cell problem. Uh, because if you take the continuous cell problem, uh, the, let's call the, the left side uh, operator L, you exponentiate with time delta, delta T. And if you tailor expand formally, uh, you cancel out the chi one, you get exactly this quantity, delta T V1, because it's, uh, this follows from the, uh, uh, the continuous cell problem. And here it is, this I, is some kind of a discretization of e to the delta t l. And this term is just that term. And this term is just a uh, approximation of v1. So we could see that the discrete cell problem uh, is actually some version, uh, some approximation of the continuous cell problem. In fact, this i delta t tau operator uh, has an explicit form, uh, which I can put on a single line over here. Uh, so it's uh, uh, if you split the L uh, uh, into a sum of four operators, and if you uh, do an operator splitting like this, uh, that's exactly the I delta T that we talked about. So this is actually uh, an approximation you can prove of the E to the delta T L. Okay, so that's the connection. All right, so now let's see how it works. So first we apply to the uh, ABC flow and with capital T equal to 12,000, uh, delta T is 10 to minus three, a number of particle 120,000. Uh, then we can go down to uh, D zero equal to 10 to the minus four. And from 10 to the minus three, 10 to the minus four, we can fit a line and get the slope. And uh, here it is, uh, the, uh, effect, uh, the enhanced diffusivity, effective diffusivity is on the order one over D zero. And this is the maximal enhancement. Uh, so uh, of course, uh, this result is uh, known uh, before from uh, physics papers and so on. We recover it here. Uh, and one reason is uh, that the uh, ballistic trajectories we talked about has a cube like induce a cube like structure and that help the maximal enhancement on that order. All right, and now let's go to the Kolmogorov flow and you do the same. And you find out that the slope is much smaller. Now it's 0 0.13. So this line is uh, flatter. And uh, the dynamical reason is, of course, there's no more uh, the vortex tubes like structures. And uh, maybe there's some remnant structure so that it's not going down to uh, zero exactly. Uh, but it's clearly sub maximal. So there's a clear di distinction here. The, uh, you have the effective diffusivity is sub-maximal. And here's the new numerical exponent. Okay, uh, and then let's go on to the time-dependent uh, Kolmogorov flow. Uh, in this case, uh, we could uh, draw a plot. Uh, here's the D0. As D0 goes to zero, you can see uh, here the, the other uh, coordinate is theta. So we start to see that uh, there is uh, enhancement, uh, but it doesn't go to zero. Uh, it, it actually follows some sub-maximal law. Uh, you can extract some numbers. Uh, if say they go to 0 0.1, you, you get 0 0.2, maybe other numbers along different directions. Uh, you also see a uh, resonant phenomenon. Uh, so the, it's not a flat uh, surface, it's a, a curve, uh, I and mean, there's a, a peak a structure, in particular, as D0 gets small. So, okay, so uh, that's the, uh, <laughs> we could handle the uh, Kolmogorov flow, uh, and this has never been computed before. So we're very proud that the, the Lagrangian approach works in three dimensions. So now let's move on to uh, the stochastic flows. Uh, uh, so I like to consider the uh, time mixing, because mixing is uh, critical, uh, uh, and uh, in particular is Markovian in time and volume preserving. So here are some uh, definitions. Uh, first of all, the uh, uh, in space is stationary or ergodic. So there's a um, measure preserving uh, group action, which we call tau x. 
to preserve the measure and it's ergodic. And, and then uh, in time, it's Markovian. So there's a, a semi group T of T. And then uh, the, the space time flow could be uh, represented into this way. So uh, the let the group action in, induce a, a X, and then there's a time in there. Uh, so uh, this flow, we are going to assume is locally Lipschitz, uh, has some smoothness, uh, divergence free, and has a second, a finite second moment. Okay, so uh, so what is the character problem? Uh, well, let L be the generator of the Markov probe process, and then you get L plus B dot gradient plus Kava Laplacian. Uh, so it's a, a vacuum diffusion uh, like uh, operator. And the right hand side is minus, uh, now we call it a B. Uh, in, in the periodic case, we call it V, but it's very similar, similar looking. Uh, the only thing is, uh, this uh, problem uh, is even more di difficult to solve because it's a stochastic. Okay, so we're going to do the same thing uh, look at the uh, SDE. Uh, it's known theoretically uh, that by a nice paper of Fangia and Komarovsky in uh, 99 that uh, if you scale the uh, stochastic differential equation uh, in the uh, parabolic way, uh, the scale process converts weakly to Brownian motion and uh, uh, you get the diffusivity, uh, enhanced diffusivity given by here. So, uh, in terms of a corrector. Okay. So uh, I'd like to say that thanks to the uh, time mixing, uh, this character is actually stationary. If you don't have the time mixing, th then this character may not be uh, stationary, it could be worse. Okay. So now we're going to uh, introduce a uh, numerical scheme. And just like before, we want a volume preserving scheme. The only uh, additional difficulty is that uh, previously we took advantage of uh, separability, but in this case, in the stochastic case, there is no more uh, separability in the velocity field in general. So the volume preserving scheme uh, would be implicit. So I show you an example here in two dimension. It's easy to write down. You see that the mean of uh, xn, xn plus one appear on the right hand side, and in the meantime, you uh, try to get xn plus one here. Uh, so you have to solve any implicit equation. So that's the additional com complication. Otherwise, there's these volume preserving schemes, which I denote by phi. Uh, OK, uh, so that's two dimension. In higher dimension, we follow the uh, same strategy of Feng and Chang, that was splitting, and then so on. So introduce something called the uh, environment process, uh, which is tau w. So you essentially view from the particle position something like a moving coordinate. And this is the discrete version. So you use that to define a mark of uh, a semi-group. And here's the evolution operator and the discrete type version. And after that, you can use this operator to define a character. So character has an integral, uh, integral representation in terms of this uh, mark of operator as T. All right. So now we're going to do something very similar uh, to this. So introduce the B delta T. Uh, that's the phi, the right-hand side of the uh, discretization minus x. And, uh, this is actually just the, if we go back to the previous slide, uh, uh, suppose we look at the two-dimensional case. If you subtract this off, this is just delta B, actually. OK. So uh, all right. And then this mean is here. So this is the discretized representation in terms of the SN operator. It's very similar to the uh, continuous case. And you can show that uh, this satisfies, it's a mean zero solution of the discretized uh, or the discrete uh, character problem. So it's S1 minus I uh, identity phi delta T with a uh, delta B essentially on the right hand side. Okay, so let's flashback. Uh, uh, we can see that this is really just uh, some dis dis discrete version of the uh, corrective problem we have there. So here it is. And then the result is that uh, if you look at the mean square displacement, uh, the discrete type version as angle to infinity, you're going to recover the effective diffusivity uh, up to some uh, order uh, between zero and one. Okay, so how do you do it uh, computationally? So in space, we're going to use a random Fourier series uh, to generate uh, this function. 
And so, uh, so it's cosine. So he said that uh, the, this wave number km has to follow certain independent. Uh, so uh, the direction of these uh, vectors are uniformly distributed on the unit sphere. And the magnitude uh, follows some uh, power rule uh, that decays slowly. Uh, so if, for example, here, and this is just to uh, mimic the energy spectrum of physical flows with certain cutoff. So you don't go to infinity. Instead, you cut off some capital K. Um, so this is the spatial part. You want to uh, have some random vector uh, pointing in uniform direct, uh, distributed directions with certain magnitude. And then the U and uh, UM and KM have, have to be de defined. The UM, uh, uh, OK, so the uh, uh, UM is defined in the following way. It has to uh, uh, preserve the volume. Uh, so it's KCM, uh, which is time dependent. What is KCM? That's the uh, uh, independent uh, 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 einstein ullenbeck uh, pro process. So it's Markov in Gaussian uh, with uh, covariance function given by here. So theta is the uh, inverse co correlation line. So the KCM, uh, eta m are independent einstein ullenbeck and the KM uh, is what we define here. And then you form the cross product that gave you the UM. And this structure automatically guarantees that if you take a divergence, uh, the flow is zero, uh, the divergence is zero. OK, so now let's go down to the simulation. Uh, we created the reference solution uh, with 100K uh, multicolor realizations, uh, capital T equal to 40, sigma equal to zero, 01. And uh, here's the 0 0.03, uh, that's the uh, uh, reference time step. And then we uh, look at the other time step and see how the method converge. So uh, down below is uh, the, uh, we're plotting the error versus time step. As the time step is small, uh, the uh, volume preserving scheme follow the red line uh, uh, with exponent 0 0.86, so that's, but if you do the standard Euler, you get uh, the line above. Uh, lower the better, uh, the Euler has 0 0.44. So this shows you the volume preserving scheme uh, is much better than Euler. Uh, this one shows the time correlation. Uh, the faster uh, the time is uh, decorrelated, uh, the, the, the faster the convergence. So large, larger the theta, the less time uh, correlation, and the more you get decay. Uh, so the variance will be k five. Uh, of course, when you do Monte Carlo, you want the variance to be under control, especially if it's small. That's good news. So, for example, in this case, when theta is a ten, uh, among this group, the highest, you follow the green curve, and uh, by the time three, your your variance is very small. And then, okay. So if we take kappa to be uh, a, a small number, uh, let's say you go from kappa equal to 1 to uh, 0 0.2, 0 0.04, and all the way down to 0, uh, what happened to these uh, uh, the second moments uh, divided by 2t? So you see here that uh, they level off uh, pretty quickly. This is because our uh, theta uh, is uh, 1. Uh, you have enough uh, decorrelation. And uh, as you reduce kappa, these curves start to converge. The values uh, eventually converge around here, uh, which is very close to the, uh, uh, the value at zero kappa. In this case, the zero kappa also is diffusive. Uh, this is the theoretical result by Fanjian Komorowski. And our numerical method recovers uh, the analytical result in this case. OK, so that's the story of Lagrangian methods for effective diffusivity. And now let's move on to the uh, front speed. So here's the, um, the KPP, the Komorov petrovsky piskunov nonlinearity. And uh, other than that, the problem is uh, just like before, advection diffusion. So now we're after the front speed along the direction E. <coughs> uh, there's also a cell problem, which I write down here, advection diffusion. You don't have to look at the, the details, except that here you get a a low order term, which is like a potential. And the story is that if you start with anything positive, for example, one, you evolve long enough and uh, take a log divided by t, uh, this has a almost sure limit. Uh, it's also called the principal Lyapunov exponent. Uh, turns out it's uh, convex and superlinear in large lambda. And then you can minimize this quantity lambda mu over lambda. That gives you the front speed. OK, so that's the. Uh, 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 if you like the corrector problem. 
Uh, this problem was uh, first uh, solved uh, in the space periodic case uh, by Gerda Friedman in 79. Uh, and they had the, uh, this variational formula uh, or the dual version of it. And uh, in 2005 and nine, uh, uh, my student, uh, with, with, with my student and co-author, we, uh, uh, Jim, uh, Jim and I eventually did the stationary ergodic case uh, in, in 2009. So that was the, so this is a, uh, the end result. Uh, okay, so, uh, there's a connection of the uh, self uh, character problem, which is linear, uh, to Hamilton to Jacobi. How, how do you do that? So if you define a new function called v, which is lambda uh, e dot x, which gives you the uh, direction of propagation plus log of dot w, uh, you take the log. And then this new function v will satisfy the quadratic Hamilton to Jacobi equation. <laughs> uh, kind of like the KEPZ, except it's not potential, uh, but it's advection. And this uh, could, uh, uh, falls into the general uh, viscous hamilton jacobi equation. And this mu we talked about in the last slide is uh, exactly the effective Hamiltonian, or the homogenized Hamiltonian. Uh, in this direction, uh, there's uh, uh, more work uh, uh, that go beyond the quadratic nonlinearity, uh, which I list here. Uh, for any convex and uniformly coercive uh, Hamiltonian, you can homogenize. Uh, in the KPP case, uh, because it's special, we could uh, do a little bit more, relax the uniform coercivity to uh, finite second moment conditions. So this allows the unbounded velocity, uh, which one would encounter in the stochastic case. Okay, so uh, previous uh, computational efforts were uh, uh, using the linearized uh, character equation, uh, one way or the other, by finite elements or semi-Lagrangian, which I list here. Uh, but today we're going to do full Lagrangian, so uh, we can write the uh, feynman cast formula for the solution, and then uh, here's mu. The only problem is uh, this uh, formula is very difficult to directly simulate because uh, uh, you really uh, trace trajectories that try to maximize this quantity, and, 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 and that is a, a rare event, perhaps. So anyway, it's a, another simple problem uh, to, to do it directly here. Instead, we're going to no, uh, look at a normalized uh, version, which is called the feynman cut semigroup. So here it is. Uh, so you normalize uh, the exponential factors so that you can view this as a probability density function. And uh, this semigroup, uh, as t goes to infinity, uh, would, uh, you can view it as a mapping on the measured mu uh, for any test function phi. And uh, so as t goes to infinity, no matter where you begin with a probability measure, you will convert to the invariant measure, which we call new sub c. And if you let the numerator x on the invariant measure by time t, you get exactly the uh, mu t coming back. So mu is the growth rate of this invariant measure under this uh, pt operator. And this is our starting point of uh, numerical uh, discretization. We're going to uh, discretize essentially this quantity and try to approximate mu. And that is. Uh, so here I write down the discretization of the numerator and the ratio. And here's the theorem that uh, shows that the, the, the uh, approximate mu value is within order delta p, uh, p between 0 and 1 of the exact mu. So here's the algorithm. Uh, you're going to start with, uh, you, you're trying to approximate the invariant measure at t equal to infinity. So you start with uh, the first generation of n particles. We label them here uniformly distribute the under torus, uh, and uh, we're going to evolve them uh, in the following way. So first, uh, each particle would uh, uh, go by evasion diffusion, so you move around, uh, let them uh, randomly move around a little bit. Uh, you also calculate the fitness of each particle uh, using exactly the potential part of the, the operator. So this exponential part gave you the fitness uh, then you can uh, look at the mean fitness, uh, take a lot divided by delta t. This is kind of an approximation of the mu already at that stage. And then uh, when the particle moves uh, to new locations, uh, you calculate uh, a weight function. Uh, so this is, uh, so if you normalize the uh, fitness into a probability di distribution, so, the, uh, so this bound here, uh, that tells you uh, how fit each particle is. Uh, so the game is the fit ones survive, the, the weak one go out. So uh, uh, statistically, you resample uh, this po population in terms of this empirical measure. 
and then uh, you continue. So uh, eventually the growth rate of the po po population will give you the new uh, peak. So in, in nutshell, that's what happened. Uh, so I'd like to uh, uh, point out this is a well-known approach in physics, uh, but more for a spatially uh, periodic case. Uh, here's the, uh, the re recent work on the error analysis. And we'll try to do it, uh, now we're gonna do it for the 3D time periodic homogonal flow, which is given here. Uh, so you can do some simple scaling analysis. I'll skip some detail, uh, but you end up with C star equal to A 0.6. So some scaling based on the effective diffusivity, you can do some scaling. All right, and here's our computation with uh, 800,000 particles, 150 generations of, uh, you know, the, uh, the fitness survive uh, evolution. Uh, then you get this curve of C star and it, it goes down to zero with some slope. The numerical slope is 0 0.65, so not too far from the uh, scaling, the cool scaling analysis. Okay, so uh, time to conclude. So we developed a Lagrangian method and their approximation of uh, effective diversity in front speed, and in particular, uh, the, the uh, discrete character approximations of the continuous PD case. Uh, in two instances, one is volume preserving scheme, the other one's uh, genetic particle evolution. Uh, so there's a lot of uh, interesting problems for analysis remaining. And of course, the next logical step is to uh, extend this uh, genetic uh, algorithm uh, for random media of KKP fronts. And uh, also right now we uh, evolve through uniform distribution. Uh, you could try to do something uh, more fancy using deep learning uh, to learn some adaptive initial measure. So the convergence uh, to the invariant measure will be a lot faster and so on. Uh, I'll end here. Thank you very much.